Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Hamas. What does it mean? And, uh, well, it kind of depends. You know, so what is the what is the meaning of the word Hamas? And it depends on who you ask. Um, before we get into this, give a shout out to my cousin Lance. He sent me a text. Kudos to his wife, Kristen. They got to talking about this. Sent a text to me, a little word study from a concordance. And uh, so we're going to take a look at it. Of course, once he showed this to me, I got to dig in a little deeper and found some interesting stuff. And I thought, you know, we need to share this and talk about it. And, you know, is it prophetic? What does it mean? Hamas or the Islamic resistance movement is a Sunni Muslim organization. And the title is an acronym from an Arabic phrase. I'm not even going to try to say it. But that's what's interesting about that to start with. Hamas is Sunni. They are supported primarily. Uh, they're an Iranian proxy, which is Shia. Now, they may fight like cats and dogs with each other, and they'll kill each other, and they'll bring destruction within each other. But one thing about it, they will unite together uh, in force, <coughs> in deed and purpose, to go after the little Satan. Uh, Israel, as they tell us, now, they have they have bigger objectives. Uh, the United States being the big one, but the Arabic word, well, let's back up. So Hamas, political military organization, Sunni Muslim uh, headquarters down there in the Gaza Strip. Um, not going to get into the politics of that, but that's where it comes from. And then there's the Arabic word Hamas, which means zeal, strength. Bravery, you know, so from from a from a Muslim Islam, those who worship Islam, Hamas is a positive term. You know, they they're resisting the Zionist entity. They they are full of zeal, strength, bravery, etc. <clears throat> That's their their perspective. However, there is the Hebrew word Hamas, and you can look this up encourage you to do it per lexicons and dictionaries in the hebrew concordances hamas means violence uh, and in the bible the word hamas is translated as violence wrong or malicious and so you know as you read the bible um you're reading along you see the word violence of course you'd want to check it against a concordance is that where hamas is used and so we're going to use the terms throughout this little discussion here uh, hamas and violence are going to be synonymous and i'll use them both um and the first time hamas is used in the bible is in genesis before the flood and i think there's a lot of real purpose in looking at the bible looking at the first time a concept a term is used and how does god respond how does god react uh, he's setting a precedent with, with a term, a, a word, a situation. And, um, boy, howdy, Genesis six eleven. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with Hamas, um, you know, and as we get into this, this is something that's been jumping out at me uh, while reading this, studying this, and then also some other things looking through the prophets. Just this idea of uh, sin, and as a result, of course, we are guilty in sin. We have consequences for our sin, but just how the, that sin defiles the earth. And that starts right, right from the beginning in the garden, the curse, the curse on the earth wasn't as productive, didn't produce the fruit, didn't produce the vegetation, vegetables, etc. because of sin. So our sin has a direct impact on the land. And of course, we know in the, in the New Testament, the creation groans. But just that concept, that idea of the land, the earth itself being affected by our sinful action. 
Uh, but back to Genesis 6, 11, violence, Hamas, the earth was full of violence. Skip forward to Genesis 6, 13. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end to all flesh. Uh, for the earth is filled with Hamas. The earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them. That'd be the flesh, humanity, as well as animals, uh, with the earth. So earth's been defiled as well. Need to clean that up. And, you know, look into the future. Earth's going to get plenty of defilement taking place on planet earth. But the earth, whereas water cleansed it the first time, fire will cleanse it the second time. Um, but again, looking at the term focus on violence, Hamas, and with this initial recognition and observation, God's response to violent violence is to eliminate Hamas, to eliminate violence. Humanity had defiled the earth on the, or the land with violence had defiled the, the land with Hamas. So you know, again, God's original intent was to destroy was to destroy the earth along with humanity. And of course, we got some insects and animals and all those things as well. Took care of that with water and a flood. So, you know, that pattern has been put into motion. God has, um, he doesn't like violence and he will respond to violence. And he will eliminate Hamas. <laughs> and, and you think about that in the context of today's world with the the political group down there in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, Hamas. You know, they see it as a positive thing. The Jews hear Hamas and it's like, well, yeah, they're violent. And boy, howdy, are they, they're proving it as they have over the last week and doubled double down on it. They're not messing around. They are being violent. Um, I'm not going to get into all the violence. There's plenty of that as far as what's taken place. Um, and they broadcast their violence. They're proud of it. Um, they show people, they put it on cell phones, they put it on the internet. Um, okay. So being, being a guy that's into prophecy, Hey, let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Um, to me, now, and of course, you know, before we get into Ezekiel 7, just the idea of violence or Hamas, the Bible talks about people with violent acts or acts of Hamas, you know, within that context. But when we take a look at Ezekiel 7, I want to, we're going to first, you know, here are the, here are the main verses we're going to focus on. Ezekiel 7, verse 11 verse 23 and verse 25. I'm going to jump to Ezekiel 7 and we're going to look at look at this from the beginning and the first thing big picture context they put the quote hour of doom. Now we're going to look specifically you know the context of this the word of the Lord came to me saying, "O son of man, this is what the Lord God says to the land of Israel." the land. And in some of the other prophecies, God will talk about the sons of Judah, the sons of Israel, the sons of, you know, whoever this is to the land of Israel. And the context is the end. The end has come upon the four corners of the land. Remember God's original land grant to Israel is, uh, from the Nile to the Euphrates. So what we see now of modern day Israel is nothing as compared to what's coming in a future Israel. But the context is the end. The end is upon you and I will unleash my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and repay you for all your abominations. I will not look on you with pity, nor will I spare you, but I will punish you for your ways and for the abominations among you. Then you will know that I am the Lord this is what the Lord God says. Disaster, unprecedented disaster. Behold, it is coming. Again, the end has come. The end has come. It has roused itself against you. Behold, it has come. Doom has come to you, O inhabitants of the land. 
And he's not calling out a specific group of people. Specifically, he's calling out the inhabitants of the land. And as we sit here now in uh, October 2023, you have multiple people inhabiting his land, Israel, as he sees it. You've got, of course, Israel there. You have uh, the Palestinians from Gaza and the West Bank. And then also you have folks who occupy a future land, include Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, uh, arguably parts of Egypt, the Arabian Peninsula. I mean, so God's land that he has ultimately deemed as a land grant to nation Israel, that that's a lot of people, and that's a lot of different peoples that are inhabiting the land that he has designated to nation Israel. Israel. Time has come. The day is near. There is panic on the mountain instead of shouts of joy. Very soon I will pour out my wrath upon you and vent my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and repay you for all your abominations. I will not look on you with pity, nor will I spare you, but I will punish you for your ways. A lot of abominations. You notice in that? Then you will know that it is I, the Lord, who strikes the blow. And then this is where we start taking a good hard look um, at Hamas or violence. Behold, the day is here. It has come. Doom has gone out. The rod has budded. Arrogance has bloomed. Their Hamas has grown into a rod to punish their wickedness. So, you know, as we look at this from the standpoint of Ezekiel, roughly 700 years before Christ, is he calling out to a group? I mean, it's a play on words at the very least. Violence has grown into a rod to punish their wickedness. Hamas has grown into a rod to punish their wickedness. Now, you know, is God looking down the corridors of time and saying, hey, there will be a group named Hamas? I don't know, perhaps. Is this the time? I don't know. If it is the time been pretty clear from what we've read so far in Ezekiel 7 the context of this is the end and and you know for the sake of discussion if this is the end if this is the time and if this is the group Hamas that is quote violence we're close this is the beginning what we are seeing is literally a beginning of, of, of the end the time has come the day has arrived uh, let the buyer not rejoice and the seller not mourn. The wrath is upon the whole multitude. So, I mean, everybody's going to get it. I mean, and that's the whole point of the tribulation. The seller will surely not recover what he sold while both remain alive, for the vision concerning the whole multitude will not be revoked. And because of their iniquity, not one of them will preserve his life. Uh, they have blown the trumpet, made everything ready, but no one goes to war, for my wrath is upon the whole multitude. The sword is outside, plagues and famine are within. Those in the country will die by the sword. Those in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. Uh, survivors will escape and live in the mountains, moaning like doves of the valley, each for his own in iniquity. Every hand will go limp, every knee will turn to water. They will put on sackcloth and terror will overwhelm them. Shame will cover all their faces and all their heads will be shaved. Um, so, I mean, part of this you, you can see, you know, with what's getting ready to happen in Gaza. Nobody doesn't look like anybody's going to escape to the mountains. And I would argue that'd be the folks probably referring to in Israel proper, Jerusalem, etc. Um, where do we go? Yes. Um, jump forward here. Forge the chain. Verse 23, forge the chain chain for the land is full of crimes of bloodshed and the city is full of Hamas. So I will bring the most wicked of nations to take possession of their houses. I will end the pride of the mighty and their holy places will be profaned. Anguish is coming. They will seek peace but find none. And isn't that the way of the modern day terrorist group? Hamas, 
the violent ones. They seek peace. You know, they like to go stir up a mess, do a little destruction, create some violence, and then they want to cry for peace but find none. And at some point, God says, disaster upon disaster will come, and rumor after rumor. Then they will seek a vision from a prophet, but instruction from the priests will perish, and counsel as will counsel from the er elders. Now, I would take some of this would be uh, toward Israel as well. But the king will mourn, the prince will be clothed with despair, and the hands of the people of the land will tremble. I will deal with them according to their conduct and judge them by their own standards. You will know that I am the Lord. But just the idea... Uh, Hamas violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness. Now, they're part of the land currently. Can't deny that. None of them are going to remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth. And they got some money. It's all been given to them. They don't, they don't make or create anything. They're, they're just takers. Um, what do they offer from an economic standpoint? Forge a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes. Well, we've seen that with, with them in action with their invasion of Israel. And the city, Gaza, Gaza City, is full of violence. And, of course, all a lot of cities are full of violence, full of Hamas at this time. And when anguish comes, they will seek peace. Well, I'll tell you what, anguish, anguish is getting ready to come. Uh, this is from Israel Defense Forces. Uh, we'll pull this up real quick. IDF announcement sent to the civilians of Gaza City. IDF calls for the evacuation of all civilians of Gaza City from their homes southwards for their own safety and protection and move to the area south of the Wadi Gaza, as shown on the map. We'll get to that map here in just a second. The Hamas the violence terrorist organization waged a war against the state of Israel and Gaza city is an area where military operations take place. This evacuation is for your own safety. <laughs> now Hamas violence is telling people don't evacuate. You stay put. We got this. Okay, fine. Um, you will be able to return to Gaza city only when another announcement permitting it is made. That'd be from the IDF. Do not approach the area of the security fence with the state of Israel. Hamas, violence, terrorists are hiding in Gaza City inside tunnels, underneath houses, and inside buildings populated with innocent Gazan civilians. Uh, civilians of Gaza City, evacuate south for your own safety and the safety of your families and distance yourselves from Hamas, violence, terrorists, who are using you as human shields. In the following days, the IDF will continue to operate significantly in Gaza City and make extensive efforts to avoid harming civilians. And so that was, that went out, gosh, well, we're, we're past the 24 hours or close to it at this point. So, and here's the map that they're talking about. I think this is from the nationalnews.com, MENA, Palestine, Israel. Israel, Hamas, Gaza, death, live. And so let's, you know, within the context of Ezekiel 7 and the whole play on the word violence, Hamas, we're talking about a very small piece of territory here. What is it? Three miles wide on average by about 26, 28 miles, maybe 30. Um, this is not the eradication, the cleansing of the land the, abom the judgment for all the abominations that Ezekiel 7 is talking about. I mean, that is, you know, looking, you know, if we extended this map out, the Niles down through here somewhere, and then, oh gosh, the Euphrates is around here somewhere. On down, you have the Arabian Peninsula, etc. We're talking about a small piece of land. This is not going to be the fulfillment of Ezekiel 7. But what we see in here. I think the level of destruction, maybe a microcosm, a little taste of what is to come. Um, you know, Jesus himself said this, this seven-year period coming will be the worst time on the planet in the history of mankind. And that includes the flood. You know, what's coming is worse. 
Um, and remember, this area is in the dark. They have no electricity. They have no uh, water. They've been surrounded. Food's been cut off. No internet services. Communications are out. I mean, anything they're going to get is going to be from going to be from the sea. Um, but I've heard this is not a good area to go fish or swim because the you know the the civil services with drainage they just let sewage raw sewage they don't treat it and just runs out into the ocean and that extends even up here to the north uh they don't recommend people swimming so far up here just because of the the environmental factors of sewage coming out of gaza strip um any rate but by no means is this is this going to be and I, and I suspect, I could be very wrong, but I suspect there's about to be some serious house cleaning once this ground invasion starts. I've heard anywhere from 300 to 350,000 troops are getting ready to take some action down in the south. Uh, we also want to pay attention to some happenings. Hezbollah starting to fire a few things in from Lebanon. Israel has responded by taking out some posts up here on the northern border. Uh, the Damascus airport has been bombed extensively. Flights cannot come in and out of there due to damage to the runways. And then also uh, airports in the far north near Aleppo, Syria. That's off the map. It would be up in this area closer to Turkey. Uh, those airports and runways have been taken out. So Israel is acting, trying to prevent further things from coming into um the enemy's hands via Iran. And here's a little operational update. Day seven, this is now probably what, 359. So we're probably talking at least 12 to 16 hours old. So I'm sure there's some more information that's come out. Uh, this was as, as of this morning, about 1130 Israel time. That had been about 330 in the morning here on the Central Standard Time. Or central, yeah, I guess we are in central. No, we're still not. We're still in central daylight's time in in the central time zone, about an eight hour difference. So 3,200 plus Israel, Israelis injured, 1,300 plus Israelis killed, 6,000 plus rockets fired from Gaza. IDF claims to have struck 2,687 targets and 120 hostages families have been notified so they've been able to account for 120 people who were hostages so a little bit of an update and some of you may hear this this post and think oh it's a reach dude and it may be but it's you know every time you see the word violence in the bible the english word for violence most of the time i think i saw it was 60 times 60 times in the old testament where you see the word violence or what were some of the other ones? You had violence, um, wrong, malicious. It's the word Hamas. So next time you're reading your, your Bible, substitute the word Hamas and see if it doesn't fit the modern day, uh, entity, the political entity that we know as Hamas in the West bank and the Gaza strip and tell me if their actions that are being described in the Bible are not consistent with um, Hamas or violence. At any way, little play on words in the Bible. I find those things kind of interesting. If you find that enjoyable, not that not the violence is enjoyable, but if you if you benefit from the study, if you like the study, please feel free to share it with others. PaulThePoke.com. Um, this one is categorized under Gaza Strip Philistia Prophecy Trend Update, Ezekiel 7. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, type in your email address here, hit subscribe. You'll receive a email every time we put something out. Also, some people follow this at Facebook under under my name, Paul Lear, under Paul the Pope dot or just Paul the Pope. Either way. Um you can you can get these things as well. I know some folks follow me at uh, YouTube. Some folks follow on what used to be Twitter, now X. Some folks follow via God in a Nutshell on Facebook. All kinds of ways to get the info. 
feel free to share the word, you know, and again, if, um, if this little play on words, you know, and judgment is about to be executed on violence, and this is where we start it, the context of this is the end. And I don't know if, if this is the beginning of the end. Now, there's plenty of things to suggest. Just looking at the conditions around the planet uh, pretty much fit what the prophet said, what Jesus said, and every day something something trends more toward, hey, I'm coming, I'm coming, and he is coming, regardless of what the critics out there, the atheists, the non-believers, whatever. He's coming back, and you're not stopping it. So I want to get right with Jesus. He covered us. His shed blood paid for our sin. And he'll he'll clean up the land. He'll clean us up spiritually. Um, cleanse our souls. Cleanse us. Transform us um, into our eternal bodies. So appreciate you guys following along. Have more stuff coming out. I'm sure the news flow on this, we're, if you listen to the folks in Israel, settle in. We're just getting started. Talk to y'all later. Bye.